Morning guys, I'm Siobhan, a third year medical resident. It's the first snowy day of the year, so I'm slipping to work. <laughs> um, currently I'm on a respirology rotation. Some people call it pulmonology. It's all the same thing. It's a specialty of the lungs. So today you're going to see the type of things that we do. And usually in the winter, it gets a bit busier because people get a lot of chest infections. So we're starting the day with an hour of teaching. So we'll go and meet the team now. I'm not actually sure of the topic. As residents, we're doctors training to be specialists. So our days are filled with learning as well as clinical work. So today we're going in depth on how to interpret pulmonary function tests, where patients blow into a machine and then we can figure out the speed of the air and their lung volumes. Morning guys. After printing our patient lists, we're dividing up the list, assigning residents or medical students to each of the patients. So this is something I don't always get to show you guys. One of the best parts of residency is working with great teams of residents. And here we might actually be having a little bit too much fun today, but they do say that laughter is the best medicine. Okay, so at this point we've divided up our patients. We each only are seeing about three or four patients today. We've got a big team, which is nice. And um, then any new patients that come into the emergency department or that we need to see, we'll just divide it up as we go. The first patient that I'm seeing today is a man who was admitted last night for hypoxia. He gradually had become more short of breath over a few weeks and became concerned, so we went to see his family doctor. When he arrived at the clinic, his oxygen saturations were only 73%, so he was immediately sent to the emergency department. Okay, so this patient has a lot of fluid on just one side of the lung, which is called a pleural effusion. Now, that can be for a lot of different reasons. Some of them are really serious, like cancer or an infection get, that gets stuck there. And other times it's not as serious, but we won't know until we actually get some fluid off of that and, and analyze it under the microscope. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go get the supplies and we're gonna do something called um, a thoracentesis. Getting supplies and setting up often takes the most time. So during that time, I like to actually visualize the procedure to help me prepare mentally and also so that I don't forget anything. So I'll be using an ultrasound to put a needle through the patient's back just on top of one of his ribs and I'll be draining out fluid from his chest. The goal is to take off fluid and then decompress the lungs so that he can breathe better, but also so that we can make a diagnosis. So I'll be sending off the fluid in different containers and sending a whole bunch of tests, including bacterial culture, getting cell count and differential to see what types of cells are in there, and also cytology and flow cytometry to look for cancer cells. Okay, so we just got consulted to see a patient with really severe COPD and they're coming in with extreme shortness of breath. Um, so before I head down to the emergency department, I'd like to look things up on the computer just sort of to have some background information. Um, so let me just log on here. Okay, so COPD is a chronic lung disease and it's caused primarily by smoking. It's actually the fourth leading cause of death in the US. So this is a big deal. It's something we see a whole lot. And on the respirology team, we see it even more. Um, so what happens basically is smoking causes inflammation and then destruction of some of the lung tissue, especially in the, the small little um, branches of the airways. And um, looking at this patient here, it looks like she's got only about 14% of her normal lung capacity. So you can imagine it doesn't take much for someone like this to feel really short of breath. It doesn't take a lot to tip them over the edge. So I just want to go through the blood work and imaging and, and see what's going on before we go down. And actually, honestly, this name, the name of this patient, so familiar. I'm sure I know her. Um, so that's kind of like a, a nice thing because you already know the patient, but uh, it's not obviously not a good thing if they're still coming back into hospital. Um, but that's the nature of a chronic illness is it keeps happening and it, and it gets worse over time. So um, I'm sure I will recognize her when I, when I see her. 
Walking into the room, I recognize the patient right away. And I can tell she's working really hard to breathe because she's leaning forward and she's even using her neck muscles, her accessory muscles to breathe. Listening to her lungs, she's got a super long expiratory wheeze. And that's really classic for a COPD exacerbation. Okay, so the more I learn about this patient, the more convinced I am that this is all a COPD exacerbation secondary to an infection. Now, people get short of breath for a reason, and there are lots of different reasons, so you always have to think of all the causes. We've looked at an ECG and a troponin, so it doesn't look like this is a heart attack. We've thought about whether this is a blood clot in the lung. She's been taking her medications, her puffers regularly, and she's got this green sputum, lots of it, and it all just happened in the last couple of days, and apparently her granddaughter's been sick recently, so I think this is really an infectious cause. But here's the trouble. Her lungs are so bad that she's actually not able to move air in and out very easily. So I'm starting her on a BiPAP machine. So a machine is actually gonna push air down into her lungs to help try to circulate some of the oxygen better um, and get rid of some of the CO2. And hopefully she won't have to be on that for too long. So we'll follow up on her blood work later today and see if she's improving. I just wanna take this moment to talk to anyone who's currently still smoking. You know, I just really want you to value your health and to make an effort to quit. I know it is so hard, but there are wonderful resources out there and great success stories. So speak to your doctor and find out about it. All right, so I've just texted the team. So my attending physician and the rest of the team are all coming downstairs now, and we're gonna meet the new patient and go through the treatment plan. Okay, so it's just after two. I'm having some food, doing some caffeine, and uh, yeah, just giving myself a moment. I'm done with my consult and the patient's in the ward. Um, we've kind of just chatted as a team to see where everyone's at. It looks like there's one new um, consult in the emergency department, so since I've wrapped up with my things, I'm gonna see that one next. Um, we have a really strong team, lots of keen residents, so um, it's been such a pleasure. And we got these pins for all of us, these lungs, to have some lung pride for respirology. So anyway, this has been a great, it's a great rotation. Also, I really want to thank you guys for so much love and support in the last video where you found out that I was matching to rheumatology. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay guys. You guys can probably tell that. It's pure emotion and joy and happiness and excitement. So all of that starts in July. So honestly, I'm, I'm so excited for what's to come. Okay, so let's just quickly check on that new patient's blood work. Should be back now. Great, so her CO2 levels since starting the BiPAP have started coming down, which means the treatment option is working. Excellent. Okay, now we're seeing a patient who was slaughtered into the urgent uh, outpatient respirology clinic. Uh, Dana, one of the other residents saw it, so we're just gonna meet her there. We hear a full case presentation from Dana, including the patient's past medical history, medication, symptoms, physical exam and investigations. We actually all look at the CT scan together and then interpret the pulmonary function tests. So we got to apply what we learned this morning. So four senior internal medicine residents and a staff respirologist all discussing the best treatment options. Not only is this excellent training for us, but I definitely believe that it benefits the patient. Wow, so many consults today. Each of us have been doing at least one. So now we're all meeting downstairs in the emergency department to go through uh, another consult, one that Omri did. So <laughs> just kind of running all over the hospital, catching up with all the different patients. I kind of like it, it keeps things, uh, keeps things interesting. <laughs> He's under the rounds. Oh, okay. Nice. Maybe, oh. I mean, maybe we'll just talk about the people that are actually here. All right, thanks for the handover, guys. Hopefully it's a quiet night. Have yes. Night. <laughs> okay, but the day is not over yet. We now have a three-hour lecture to prepare us for the big internal medicine exam at the end of the year about preoperative um, management of patients. So now I've got to get my student brain on and uh, go for a lecture. <laughs> 
well, there you go. <laughs> That's a typical day in respirology and then even more of a day of what it's like to be an internal medicine resident studying a little bit after the day. If you have any questions, let me know. I am so excited to hear from you guys. And otherwise, I'll be chatting with you in the next video. So, bye for now. And it is dark, it is cold. But the weirdest thing, it's like every single year, I forget how cold it's gonna become, <laughs> how snowy it is. I love Canada, but like, the adjustment is jarring. <laughs> anyway, that's all I was gonna say.